Hey everyone, George here and welcome back to the channel. It has been a crazy 12 hours here. I had a friend that was in the military who was being transferred and had some really beautiful discus fish that he was going to give away to a pet store and I really did not want to see that happen so I tried to come up with some idea of how I could keep these fish and the only way I could see that I could do that was to take an existing tank, a 55 gallon uh, Fiji cube tank that's uh, peninsula style. I've been wanting to repurpose this tank anyway, I've been wanting to redesign it in some way that was uh, uh, really a departure from what it was originally and do something really exciting with it and I thought of this as a real opportunity to do that. Now uh, I was given about 24 hours notice before I was going to receive these fish so I had about 12 hours to really put a design together for this tank that uh, was going to be suitable for the discus fish that he was giving me. Now there were six fish all together. There are five fish in the tank right now. Uh, one of the fish had uh, uh, some spots on him that I was a little bit concerned about, so I did not want to put him in with the rest of the fish uh, in case there was some disease there. So he is in a quarantine tank for the next couple of weeks until he gets better and then I will add him back in with these fish. Now I tore this tank down completely from top to bottom. It was down to glass by the time I was done. The only thing I did was preserve the biomatter that was in the back of this tank because as I said this is an all-in-one and also the additional canister tank that I had in here uh, I did uh, take that apart and uh, put it into another tank to preserve it while I was building this tank. And literally over 12 hours, I came up with the design that you see here. I was very, very fortunate that I had all of the materials on hand from the hardscape to the plants. Uh, and uh, even the community fish that were in this tank originally, uh, which were cardinal tetras, uh, there were five panda quarries, two Siamese algae eaters, a pleco, and some auto sinkless. Now the auto sinkless, I didn't really see them fitting into this tank very well, so I did uh, repurpose them in another tank, and they're doing fine. Um, but uh, as far as uh, the initial fish that were in here, I was able to reuse all of them. I took everybody, put them in a five gallon uh, uh, bucket using the water from the original tank uh, and just putting a heater and an air stone in there and they did fine. So I was uh, very fortunate to be able to uh, keep them in good condition while I was throwing this tank together in this crazy manner. I really had no idea what I was going to do as far as a design. Um, I did have this stone on hand, it's called mountain stone, I'm not that familiar with it, but it has this beautiful white veining through it that is kind of a cool look. Um, I had the plants, as I said, most of those are Anubius plants, a little bit of Java fern. There's various varieties of Anubius. I'm not going to get into all the different varieties right now. I had a, a piece of wood that was already in this tank that was well seasoned. And I thought, you know, that it would fit in here and do uh, uh, something to add to this island style that I was building here for these fish. So um, I was very, very fortunate to have all of these materials on hand and I came up with this design very, very quickly. I did have to move these stones around. I cannot tell you how many times before I came up with what I thought was a good design where there was a lot of uh, open spaces around this island area for these fish to have a lot of room to swim, uh, which is important, I think, for discus fish to have. And uh, as I said, I think uh, the design uh, 
you know, for as quickly as I had to put it together, turned out really, really well. Now I want to talk about water parameters a little bit here. These fish uh, came from a tank that was running about 6.8 to 7.0 in pH. Uh, so I wasn't too concerned about that because that's about what my tanks run anyway with the water that I have here. And so, um, you know, pH, as, as I've said in many of my other videos, is really important as far as keeping it stable rather than, uh, you know, what the pH is. Uh, I prefer pH to be in the area that these fish are in right now, but sometimes uh, it's really more about the stability of the pH over the long term and not large fluctuations. Uh, as far as uh, cycling, as I said, this tank was completely cycled. I was able to preserve the biomatter in here. In the back of this tank, I was able to preserve the canister that went with it, so I was not concerned that this would not have an automatic cycle and that these fish could be put right directly in here after a short acclimation period. And uh, that's exactly what happened. It turned out absolutely perfect um, as far as ammonia nitrites and nitrates right now we're sitting after 24 to 48 hours here uh, we're sitting at zero uh, on the ammonia zero on the nitrites and we're sitting around 25 ppm on the nitrates so everything seems to be uh, a good cycle here where everything is uh, uh, working the way it should be and I um, can't be happier about that than I am. Uh, this tank as I said is a 55 gallon Fiji cube. Um, it was a tank that I wanted to redesign as I said anyway so this really gave me an opportunity to not only get some discus fish for free from a friend, but also to challenge myself to designing a tank that would be really suitable for these kind of fish. And as I said, the fish that were in here before, the cardinal tetras and that sort of thing, if you've been following my videos in the past, cardinal tetras or black neon tetras, those kind of fish do really, really well in a community tank that have discus in there because they're calm fish, they don't cause a lot of stress, and that's certainly something you don't want to have when you're adding uh, discus fish to a new environment. You don't want to have a lot of stress going on, so that worked out really, really well. Anyways, uh, thank you for joining me today. I hope that you'll leave your comments down below to uh, talk about a little bit of the design of this. I love the stone in here. As I said, it has this white veining through here and this dusting of white on the top of some of the surfaces, which matches that white sand at the bottom there. And uh, I think it's just a perfect, perfect look uh, and a great uh, bunch of hardscape in here to work with. Uh, again, it's comprised mostly of Anubias plants of different varieties. There's a little bit of Java fern in here. There's some uh, Anubias nana, Anubias petite, and uh, various other uh, varieties of Anubias as well. All of these are plants that do well with just being stuck in crevices and cracks around the rocks and the wood, so they should do well over time. Thank you for joining me today. Leave your comments down below and I will get back to you. Uh, this has been an interesting 12 hours, but I want to thank you for joining me. Uh, we will see you on the next one. Leave those comments down below and hit that bell at the top so you know when my next video comes out. Again, thank you.